So let's put into practice what we know about ANOVA and also let's talk about the assumptions behind ANOVA. Now I constructed an example data set based on the problem in my last video. So just a quick reminder, we want to check whether there is a significant difference in the mean income between Dutch, Swedish and Prussian trading companies. And by the way, this data is made up. So I've already read in the data and there is a data frame called trade data which contains my data. So let's take a look at my data, okay? So I'm going to use the view function in our studio. So view trade data. There you go. So as you can see, we have two variables. We have income and nationality. And nationality is a categorical variable with three levels. Swedish or Swede for Swedish, Prussian and Dutch. But in order to avoid mistakes, let's um, declare the variable as a factor variable and let's uh, define Dutch as our reference category. Let's do this by hand. Okay, so trade data, this is, this is our data frame and we're going to use nationality and we're going to use the as factor function on that same variable. So trade data dollar sign nationality and this will make a factor out of it. Okay, and let's change the reference category to Dutch, and we do this by using the re-level function. Uh, re-level. So, trade data, dollar sign, nationality, and our reference category will be Dutch. Okay, so if, if, if you did not understand what I just did, um, don't worry, just check out my video on um, dummy variables and you'll understand. Okay, great. Now we are ready to go. So the command to do a simple ANOVA is AOV. Open the parentheses and inside the parentheses you'll put in the formula just as if you would define a dummy variable regression. Now remember that we want to explain income by nationality. And also we got to declare our data frame. So let's put in the formula. Okay, just as if we would use lm and as if we would use nationality as an explanatory variable. So income is a function of nationality, nationality and the data frame we're using is trade data. And let's put that into an object called trade AOV. So I'm going to use the assignment operator. Now by this command I will do a simple ANOVA. Okay, so this command will do a simple ANOVA and put it into the object trade AOV. Okay, let's have a look at it. So summary trade AOV. Okay, there you go. So uh, as you remember, the important thing is the F value and the respective P value. And as you can see, the F value of 99.82 is highly significant. And we can therefore conclude that there are in fact differences between the means. Now, uh, for what I will do next, I want you to remember this F value of 99.82. So just make sure that you remember the F value of 99.82. So uh, you remember, an ANOVA is nothing else than a dummy variable regression. In fact, the AOV function does nothing less than just use the LM function and it puts in the specified formula into the ML fun LM function. Now, don't believe me? Now, let's have a look at the description of the AUV function. And you do that by putting in a question mark and the respective function. And this will give you a little description over here. Now, take a look at the details. It says that this provides a wrapper to LM for fitting models to balanced or unbalanced experimental designs. The main difference from LM is the way print, summary and so on handle the fit. This is expressed in the traditional language of the analysis of variance rather than that of linear models. So um, let's create a dummy variable regression by ourselves. So let's do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to use the LM function. And let's put that into an object called trade fit. So we're going to use LM. We put in the exact same formula. So we put in income as a function of nationality 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 and data is trade data okay so let's have a look at it so summary 
Summary. Oops. Caps lock is going wild. So summary. And let's put in trade fit. Okay. So now we get the coefficients and all of them are actually significant. Now remember that the intercept is the mean value for our reference category. So that on average Dutch trading companies make about 1018 monetary units on average. Now Prussian trading companies on the other hand make about 382 monetary units less than Dutch trading companies on average. And Swedish trading companies make on average 544 monetary units less than um, Dutch trading companies. Now also let's have a look at adjusted R squared and R squared is pretty high so this is a very good fit. Now let's have a look at the F value. Now this is called F statistic but this is the F value. Now take a look at this. It's equal to 99.82 the exact same number as before and also it's highly significant. So you see it's the exact same thing. Now based on our models we can conclude that there is in fact uh, or that there are that there is a, in fact a difference in the means. Now really well, as with normal regression, ANOVA has its important assumptions. Now, first, the within-group distributions should be normal. So if you take a look at the income by group or for every single group, you should end up with approximately a normal distribution. Now, from the, for, uh, from the former videos on the, uh, the normal distribution, you should understand why and should be straightforward. And so, so it should make sense, right? However, the second assumption is not as straightforward, but very easy to understand. And it says that the variance should be the same for every group. So what does that mean? Well, let's plot the income for every group with a box plot. Okay, so we do that by using plot. And on the x-axis, we put in our um, group variable. So our grouping variable, nationality, and on the y-axis, we put in the numerical variable, so income. Let me expand that over here. So, okay, now let's have a look at it. Um, so this is our data plotted for every group, or the income variable plotted for every group, Dutch, uh, Prussian, and Swedish. Um, by the way, if you don't understand, uh, or if you don't know how to read a box plot, don't worry, just check out my video on that uh, topic and you'll understand. So if the variance would be the same across our groups, then these boxes would have about the same size. Now they can be, of, of course, they can be higher or lower on the y-axis, right? Because after all, we're looking for differences in the mean. That's not a problem, but they should be, well, about uh, of about the same size. Now let's have a look at them. Now. Um, if you take a look at the Dutch box over here, it's much larger than the box for Prussian or Swedish trade companies. So uh, the data is much more spread out than um, for the Prussian or Swedish trade, trade companies. And this would tell us that there is in fact not equal variance across our groups. So this is a problem, right? Um, luckily, there's a statistical test to check whether the variance is the same across our groups, and it's called the Levine test. Now, the test is located in the car package. So we got to load that package. So library car. And this should load the package. Now, the command for the Levine test is Levine capital T test. Open the parentheses and inside the parentheses you put in the numerical variable first so that will be trade data and this is the variable income because it's the numerical variable. And then you put in the grouping variable so that will be trade data dollar sign nationality because nationality is the grouping variable. Now hit enter and the null hypothesis is that there is equal variance across the groups groups. <laughs> now, as you can see, um, we are pretty sure in rejecting the null. So we are pretty sure in rejecting that there's equal variance across the groups. So one of the fundamental assumptions is violated. 
Now, what about a normality? Well, you are already familiar with the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. So, well, let's use it. However, you are not familiar with subsetting data. But this time, we need to use the function three times. One time for every factor. So, you got to be familiar with subsetting data. Now, how do we do this? Well, as always, you put in the function you want to use and parentheses. So, we're going to use the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. Open the parentheses. This hasn't changed. Now, next you put in the numerical variable you want to run the test on, and that would be trade data, and we're going to use the income variable. Now, this hasn't changed, right? Now, if you, we would uh, hit enter now, what would what uh, this function would do is it would run the Shapiro Wilk test on all the observations that contain information on income, right? But we don't want that. We want to uh, do that for every single group that there is. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to subset our data. And we put in square brackets for that. So square brackets. And inside these square brackets, you put in the name of the variable you want to subset your data by inside the square brackets. Now, remember that we want to filter by nationality. So we put in trade data dollar sign nationality because we want to filter by nationality and next and you're still you're you're still inside the square brackets you put in two equal signs i know it looks pretty weird but you put in two equal signs because we want a specific level we don't want greater or less than we want a specific level and then you put in quotation marks. I know it looks very weird. And inside the quotation marks, you put in the level you want to filter by. And let's filter, and let's just, let's only use Dutch observations. Hit enter, and it will run the Shapiro Wilk normality test. Um, now, as you, as, now, now have a look at the test. So the test says that it is not significant, but it's really barely not significant. So, well, we, we should be conscious about it. Okay, so it could be that it's not a normal distribution. Okay, so let's rerun the test for Prussian trading companies. So Prussian. Okay, so not significant. And let's rerun the test for Swedish trading companies. Add not significant as well. So the normality assumption is not violated, but the assumption of, and it's called homogeneity of variance, uh, that assumption actually is violated. Now, what we would do is, of course, we would um, include that or we would report that in our paper. Now, if you would run the Levine test like we've done over there, and you would conclude, uh, no, no, that's a Shapiro Wilk test. Now, if you would conclude, okay, um, there's not equal variance across my groups, then you have to report that in your paper. Okay, so that is basically it. Now you know uh, that ANOVA is basically just a dummy variable regression.